We're driving a 2022 Hyundai Tucson. Coming up, Evie's gonna ghost ride the whip. No, really, but first, no. information explosion. No. For those who don't know, the Hyundai Tucson is a compact SUV uh, for family duty and light living in an urban environment. It's kind of a Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4 competitor. And when I say kind of, I mean exactly. Let's start with interior. This is one of the most stylish interiors we've been in in a while that I wouldn't associate with a luxury brand. Yeah, I think this piece that continues from the door all the way across onto the dash area, the sort of like dual cockpit aesthetic. If you saw this in a futuristic ride at Disneyland, it would not seem out of place. Absolutely. Like if they revamped Star Tours <laughs> into like kind of a smaller vibe, this would totally work. One thing I really like too is the look of the steering wheel. The spokes are sort of thin and it, it's almost wispy, but um, d designed and intriguing. Um, I really like it. There is a lot of black plastic. This trim piece over here, I don't really mind. This, this is already covered in all sorts of arm goo. Ew. Uh, I mean, goo might be overstating it, but uh, What I don't have know. you been doing I don't with know. your arm? Would you rather I say gunk? Like, <laughs> there's really no good word for it. Sorry, the human, the human body is disgusting. <laughs> I like too how it looks like the seats are wearing fancy necklaces. Fancy. Let's dig into family friendliness. This is larger than the previous Tucson. This is all new for 2022. Ooh. And so there's more leg room back there. In fact, it is a very accommodating and adjustable second row. Yeah, I really think it's a great size for our family. We have three. Three okay. total, not three children. We haven't just been leaving like <laughs> two at home every time we do one of these things. <laughs> They're not very good on camera. <laughs> the unloved children will clean while we're out making a video. The cargo area seems generous. Yes, I, like it's 28.8 cubic feet, which is quite good for the segment. And oh my gosh, I'm gonna gush about the cargo area. It is a large squarish space. It's got remote releases in the back. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to walk around to the side of the vehicle to um, fold the seats down. There's a little bit of under floor storage area. Just a little. <laughs> yeah, but enough. Like if you need to hide something fun, uh, you can put it under there. Do you have something you're ashamed of? Hide it underneath the floor <laughs> of your Hyundai Tucson. Oh, and I love the optional hands-free tailgate. The way Hyundai does it too, where you just have to stand with the key near the back for a predetermined amount of time, and then it'll automatically open up. So you don't have to like fling a leg or anything like that to uh, activate it. It's a really good system. But I do love watching you fling a leg. <laughs> yeah, it's as close as I get to dancing. <laughs> it's true. What about getting kiddo in and out? Installing the car seat was super simple. There's accessible latch points. She had a pretty easy time climbing into this one. Very kid friendly. On the safety front, uh, the National Highway Transportation Safety and Administration. Wait, what's beeping? <laughs> the back camera uh, stopped working. We'll fix that eventually, but for right now, we'll keep going. The ceremonial failing of the <laughs> GoPro has occurred. All hail GoPro. <laughs> As I was saying, the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration has not released crash information yet on the Hyundai Tucson um, this generation, but it does have things like lane keeping assist standard and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. One thing it doesn't have though in that active safety suite is full speed dynamic cruise control, which is something that does come standard on the Honda CRV. So I wish that was uh, part of the standard equipment list. Oh, last safety notes, a rear occupant alert system does come standard and it's just based on whether you've opened the doors or not, um, using some logic to determine whether you should look in the back there. But uh, higher up the trim level, there is a version that has an ultrasonic sensor that actually detects when a human being is in the back. Um, so that might be some motivation to go with a slightly higher trim. So what do we think? Is the Hyundai Tucson family friendly? Family friendly. I'm gonna say big time family friendly. Rear window test. All the way down! Yay! Armrest test. So, I wish the armrests were just a little bit further inboard, but I can get most of my elbow on them when I'm driving in an eight and four. And big points, even though they're stitching right here, it's soft, it doesn't scratch my delicate, delicate elbows. And uh, same deal outboard. I'm gonna go three quarters up on both the inboard and the outboard. 
The outboard is so squishy, even I noticed. Wow, that's pretty squishy. Hey, have you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, we're going to review a windowless white van. Style! I'll bet you have thoughts about the style of the Hyundai Tucson. Oh my gosh, it has so much going on. And I love it. <laughs> lines. We've got lines. They're here, they're there. Mm. Um, there are so many generic shapes for modern vehicles that sometimes it's hard to determine one from another just looking at the side. But there's no angle where you do not know <laughs> this is a Hyundai Tucson. And then the other big thing is um, up front, that grill pattern with the hidden lighting elements that emerge when you turn the vehicle on, I think it's just a really clever, interesting shape that I know is not for everyone and that makes me like it more. The only part I don't like is the part that matches the stock. That's where I think they should have you kept the, it back a little. When you do the turnaround before you leave the house and the first thing you see is you take it off, that should have been the thing they took off? Yes. How do you feel about the styling of the Hyundai Tucson? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Tell us in the comments. If you're curious what we're flying or driving between YouTube videos, give me a follow over on Instagram. And if you're curious what our family's up to, give Evie a follow. In motion! hear that? No. It's the sound of relative silence. The road here is actually <laughs> fairly abrasive, so there is some noise. But um, that windshield you're looking through is an acoustic windshield that's standard across the board. Ride quality is uh, sort of in that balanced space where it's not like super sporty, it's quite comfortable, it's really more of a, a competent, reassuring sense as you motor around the mountain. Sweet spot! As noted in the information explosion, we're driving the hybrid version of the Tucson. And as I floor it, there's an immediate Whee! punch of electric power. And then the uh, transmission, which is a six-speed automatic, which almost feels like not enough gears for the modern era. But um, it pairs nicely with the hybrid powertrain. Um, it's kind of, kind of punchy. I like it. It's good. And the transition when you leave from a stop and it's just pure electric to the gasoline engine kicking in, it's um, very smooth. If you go into the drive modes, I've just put us into sport mode. The uh, sport mode is inclined to keep it down a gear so you have more engine revs, more instant power, and the accelerator tuning, it's almost a little too aggressive. It's a very sporty mode. That means a lot coming from you. Very sporty. Um, to its credit though, the steering is not excessively heavy, but I do like that there is a distinctly different flavor with the different modes. On a quick note of criticism, the brakes. This is a hybrid and hybrid brakes are always tricky because you're blending regenerative brakes with friction brakes and coming to a smooth stop is very hard. It's almost as hard as keeping that bad GoPro going. <laughs> maybe it's the problem with the car based on how many GoPros we've had failed. Maybe it's the GoPro. Getting back to the brakes, here's how you know the brakes are hard to modulate. When the vehicle has full speed adaptive cruise control on and it comes to a complete stop, it can't do it smoothly. Oh, snap. Ugh. Probably. Uh, probably. Probably. Daddy's really good at stopping smoothly. I mean, I'm no robot, but kind of <laughs> I am. All right, let's get Evie's take. Sweetie's accelerating with um, something approaching gusto. Oh. How are you feeling behind the wheel of the 2022 Tucson? One thing I don't like, I'm kind of a hesitant driver. Like when I start to go and then hesitate and then want to go again, it really doesn't like that. Maybe something like you're not quite sure if you can pull, you can pull out. Uh, exactly. You know, it's like you have a T intersection, uh, that kind of thing. It does take some time to start an engine up and shut it off. Absolutely. And yes. so it's doing its best to predict your behavior. <laughs> but if you don't know what you're doing, the car certainly won't either. So uh, yeah, that's just one of the tricks of having a uh, hybrid. Would that um, put you off the vehicle completely? No, it wouldn't because I do like when you approach it without hesitance, it's really responsive. Okay, so maybe this is like your assertiveness training coach. <laughs> it is, for sure. Tucson wants you to get it, girl. <laughs> get it. She's getting it. Oh, she's getting it. <laughs> Any issues with visibility? I'm 5'2", and this panel can be problematic for me in a lot of vehicles, but this one seems good despite how thick it is. Yeah, and also you got that little quarter window in the back there that gives you just a little bit of extra visibility when you're looking over the shoulder. I do love a quarter window. <laughs> do you love a quarter window? Tell us in the comments. <laughs> Bye, fast car. Good job driving, sweetie. Overall, I think the Tucson is a really, really pleasant vehicle to drive. I enjoy it very much. 
Moving onward, emotion factor. Do you think there's an emotion factor here? Future luxury. Future luxury. Unicorn luxury. From the future. Rainbows and sparks. <laughs> Typically, compact SUVs have been sort of, I don't want to say stodgy, there's one, a Toyota RAV4. Uh, pretty boring, but this is not boring. Whether you like it or dislike it, you will not ignore it. I think if you take the style outside, put it with the style inside, it's still quite functional, though stylish. I think that's a, a powerful emotional combination. If you're feeling emotionally moved to buy a Hyundai Tucson of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below. Remarks! Remark number one, infotainment. What do you think? I uh, like that it's a touch screen. Yes. But I wish it had buttons and knobs too. So this is the 10.25 inch screen that comes on higher trims. The base model has an eight inch screen and because it's a little bit smaller, they actually have, as far as I can tell, because they'll never put one of those in the press fleet, they have rotary rolling knobs, almost like you find in the Genesis lineup um, for volume and for tuning. I really wish Hyundai had listened to the comment section in all those years I was complaining about Honda not having volume knobs in their cars. Honda learned their lesson and brought back the volume knobs and eventually Hyundai will probably do so as well. And also all that black plastic, oh my gosh. Again, the human body is a disgusting thing <laughs> with oils and goo, and it's all gonna wind up there. That is a good lead into all the fancy things that you can find on this otherwise accessibly priced compact SUV. On the higher trims, there's this 10.25 inch digital gauge cluster. The lower version has just that analog gauges and a hood to keep mm. the shine, sunshine from washing it out. I thought the sun was gonna wash it out. It doesn't. In direct sunlight, it's still completely visible. So that's really cool. And in there, it also shows the um, blind spot camera system. I it's love that feature. Super cool. And then also uh, this big panoramic roof is uh, available, ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, and also the 360 degree camera system that's available shows you the right angles you'd want. So when you back up, it shows all around. And then when you push forward, it shows you the front uh, corners. So you don't like uh, whack something with the front tire. It's just a really good system. Oh, you know what we haven't done? Needless full throttle acceleration. Whee! Okay, actually there was a little bit of lag before the uh, downshift there. That was, uh, it could have been spunk here. And I'm still in sport mode. Come on, get it together, Tucson. Can I draw your attention to this region right here? Oh, which region? This region right here, <laughs> where, where the shifting happens. I'm not making this any clearer, am I? <laughs> so this is a push button transmission. Um, on the lowest trim, it's a, an actual shifter. The reason why this one has the push button is, as teased in the beginning of the video, it allows you to ghost ride the whip. This is not my manly hand. Here you go. Push the uh, left. Park button? Park button, yeah. Here, maybe uh, maybe move over a little bit. I'm doing it. <laughs> Look out, dude. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> now back it in. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. Pretty cool. <laughs> you did it. You just got smart parked. <laughs> Good job ghost riding the whip, sweetie. You know, back in the olden days, you didn't have technology that made it so safe. You had to just hop out of your car and then crash it and then wind up on, you know, fail arm. Ah, simpler times. Let's talk about powertrain real quick. So the standard engine is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. Um, unsurprisingly, it is less efficient. Uh, it's also less powerful than the hybrid, which is kind of funny that we're in the era where hybrids are the more powerful choice. What I find interesting is that all wheel drive is a $1,500 option, but it comes standard on the hybrid. So if you compare an all wheel drive, straight up gasoline powered version of the Tucson to the hybrid, it's only about $1,100 pricier to go to the hybrid. Wow. The bump to go to hybrid, like it's so small that you will actually recoup that with fuel savings. Neat. Get the hybrid. Should also note that there is a Tucson hybrid that's a plug-in that covers 32 miles of range under pure electric power alone, charges in less than two hours on a level two charger, hmm. 261 horsepower, so it's the most powerful version of Tucson you can get. Again, it's so funny that the um, more efficient you are, the more power you get. Uh, we don't have pricing on that just yet though, and that would be the trick, because there is a Toyota RAV4 Prime, which has more horsepower, hmm. longer electric range, 
And based on its base price, I'm guessing there's no way the Tucson plug-in could possibly undercut it. Maybe, uh, maybe a comparison at some point would make some sense because uh, that uh, RAV4 Prime is awfully cool. Do you know some of the competitors for the uh, Hyundai Tucson? I do not. Is it the RAV4? Yes, the RAV4, <laughs> the thing I just said. Honda CRV. Oh, the new Kia Sportage is uh, coming out soon, and that thing looks weird, which uh, we definitely like. Oh, and of course, living in the mountains, the Subaru Forester. So I would suggest if you are gonna buy a Tucson, don't get the base SE. Go with the SEL. So it's $1,550 pricier, but you get blind spot warning, you get smart key access, so you don't have to reach in your pocket to push a button. You get adaptive cruise control, which is something that probably should come standard since it's standard on the Honda CRV. I'm not convinced. Can you name one other item? I sure can. <laughs> Heated front seats. Okay, now I'm convinced. Okay, go with at least the SEL. That'd be my recommendation. Unless you really like style. In fact, if you really like the style of the Tucson, but you demand even more style, go with the Tucson N-Line. It's even sportier. Ooh. Yeah, you think you see Zaz out here? You don't know Zaz. <laughs> you haven't been N-Lined yet. Oh, <laughs> my. Hello, Iguana. <laughs> hey, did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comments. Synopsis. And considering the essence of the Hyundai Tucson, it is tasty sustenance that is intense, almost too intense, but just <laughs> dialed back a little bit. To me, the Hyundai Tucson is the pock pock fish sauce wings of the compact SUV world. It's like, it's almost too tasty. And then they just, it, but it's not, it's so close though. Uh, I was sad to learn that Pock Pock, my favorite restaurant in Portland has closed. If Very I, sad. If I had a drink to pour out on behalf of fish sauce wings, <laughs> that would be weird, but I would do it. Would the drink be fish sauce? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's why there's all this gunk on the black plastic. <laughs> that what are, explains it. What were the museums doing with that thing? I don't and know. why uh, does it smell like that? <laughs> hey, if you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, give me a follow over on Instagram, or hey, give Evie a follow as well. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, please subscribe. And if you like this video, maybe click the like button. Hey, family, I think we did a pretty great job reviewing the Hyundai Tucson. Can I get a five? You and you. Come get your high five. Ah! Uh.